Hey everyone, it's Kelly from Soy and Shay, and thank you for joining me for another soap making video. Today I am making another Christmas inspired soap, and this one I'm calling Plum Pudding. It has notes of peppermint and strawberry with plum, peach, and red apple, and it's all on a base of sweet vanilla and musk. Now, this one does have 2.2% vanillin, so I know that it is going to discolour. So I'm not going to use any white in the base of this soap, but I am going to save a little bit for the top, which I won't um, colour. The colours I'm going to use today, I've got some Eminence Mica, I have some Rosewood, and I also have a little bit of Bronze Sparks. And I think these three colours are going to look really good together and hopefully make it look a little bit like a plum pudding. So let's get started. So we'll start as we always do and in my bucket here I have my oils and in my smaller bucket I have my lye water. Now usually my big moulds to make a flat top soap it takes 1.7 kilos of um, oils whereas this time I've measured them out to be 2.2 kilos because I want to make this into a mound soap and hopefully make it look like a little bit of a plum pudding top. So first thing I'm going to do is pour my lye water down my stick blender just to stop any um, splashbacks. I'm going to mix it up and then separate it out for my colours. So I'm not really too sure how this fragrance is going to behave so I'm going to start off by pouring it into my big bucket and then decide whether I am going to do a drop swirl or an in the pot swirl. Make sure I've got all of the uncolored soap mixed through and I'm going to pour a good part of this fragrance oil in here and I'm going to hand stir and just see what it is going to do here. I can see it has already darkened that purple, which is fine because plum puddings are usually that really nice, rich, dark color. So I'm not too bothered if these colors do darken. Okay, so so far so good, but I've probably just jinxed myself <laughs> as I usually do, but we'll carry on. So I am going to now just pour the rest of these in here and hand stir that in and then I think we'll do a drop swirl. So just come back to this purple, it is so far still nice and fluid so we'll just get that mixed right on in there and then we'll start pouring it into our mould before we run out of time. Alright, so I have got the buckets and the jugs completely scraped out as much as I possibly can and all I'm going to do now is try and smooth the top of this out so I end up with a mound in the middle and kind of yeah, smooth on the edges and you'll see why in just a moment. Okay, so I think I have now finished playing with that because I don't want to muddy it up any more than it already has. But the top's going to be kind of covered up in a moment. So we've got that done. I'm just going to pop that off to one side and we'll come back to that little pot that I saved just a moment ago. So we'll push this one to the back here. And what we're going to do is just clean off this. I've just got a paper towel here. And just run it around get rid of that colored soap off here never do this when you've got your 
this bit attached to your stick blender or if it's actually plugged in at the wall because these will cut fingers but I do want to get this bit of soap off here so that is now done and I'm going to attach that and I'm going to pour in just a little bit of the titanium dioxide which I have got dispersed or dissolved into some water and then I'm going to give it a bit of a blitz up and I'm probably going to have way too much leftover soap here but if I do all I'm going to do is pour it into a little mold and then I will set it aside to dry as soap dough for me. Okay and now all I'm going to do I'll just give that a stir yeah it's a bit more fluid than it actually looked so I'll give that a bit of a stir just to make sure it is all well incorporated and then I'm going to pour this onto the top and hopefully fingers crossed it will drizzle down and look like cream on top of a, a plum pudding so we'll see how we go it is a little bit thicker than what I had wanted possibly because I played around too much but that's okay we'll kind of make it look like it's drizzling here and all the way to the end so that every bar gets its bit of cream and then I might use a bit of a chopstick just to make it do a little bit more of what I want it to okay, we'll use the back of this spoon just to push it off the, the edges here and then I have some embeds to go on the top of each slice of this plum pudding oops went a bit too far down on that one there so we'll just cover that a bit more and I want this just to look really random like someone has just spooned a nice big dollop of cream on the top of the pudding I'm just going to grab a little bit more out of the jug here and do remember if you are putting any spoons or anything into your soap mix make sure that they are stainless steel not aluminium because the two raw soap and lye do not mix well with aluminium right, I think I want just a little bit more down here I'm not using the actual spoon part of it because I do have some mica and I want this to stay a nice white cream on the top here okay so that should do now this leftover batter I'm just going to leave I'll scoop that into a little mold and as I said I'll leave that to dry overnight and that will become some soap dough because I have just discovered playing with soap dough. It is something I have been wanting to do for so long now and I had a really quiet week last week and I thought right it's now or never. So I have had the um, Sorcery Soaps soap dough book for a little while now and I've been reading it and getting all the tips and tricks on how to um, make soap dough now I did decide that I wanted I didn't want any extra ingredients oops on my soap labels so I decided to have a play with my own recipe that I use for my soaps to see if it would actually come up as soap dough and thankfully it worked so I'm actually going to take my glove off here because I'm going to end up with soap over all of my tiny embeds here and that I think would absolutely ruin it so I'm just going to be very careful not to get it on my hands here and so I made my soap dough up and thankfully my little recipe worked so I have had lots of fun this week playing around making embeds to go on the soaps so for these ones all I did is I got some green and I rolled it out flat I then whoop, these ones have come apart I then had another one of those cookie cutter things that I showed in the winter frost video and that one is in it's actually a rose leaf that's this one here it is actually a rose leaf but instead of pushing down on it when it was on the hard surface to get the veins I decided not to and hoped that they would look a little bit more like a holly leaf 
And then to do the, the holly berries, I rolled out some thin little snakes of red and then I cut them up into little pieces and rolled them up into little balls. And thought, well, most plum puddings are decorated with a little bit of holly and berries on the top. So that is what we did for this soap. And I've had so much fun playing with the soap dough. I kind of regret putting it off for as long as I have. But now I've got my, my bits of soap dough all made and ready to go. Even though I haven't used the recipe in soap dough in the um, sorcery soap book, I highly recommend getting the book because there's lots of good tips in there um, about how to work with the soap dough and just other little bits and pieces of information and how to go about creating. So I do highly recommend getting her book there. And I'm just going to continue popping these onto the top. Okay, so just to finish this one off, I have some gold diva glitter and I'm just going to give it a really light oh light spritz I say as it falls out the thing across the top here and that should be finished so I'll bring you down for a closer look of plum pudding. So this is plum pudding up close so you can see the holly berry and leaves and all that glitter that's just on top of that cream. Hopefully tomorrow when we cut it, we have a really nice swirl through there. So I'll leave it for about 18 to 24 hours and come back and cut it and show you the inside. Okay, so I am back and I am cutting the plum pudding. I thought the camera was going and it wasn't, so I'll give you a quick look here. The top of it has gone a little bit brown, so I am hoping that the rest of it will stay true to the colours that I've got here. So I'm using my single bar cutter today because I was a bit worried that my multi bar cutter may cut some of these leaves, and that one is cutting it very fine. So using the single bar cutter today just to make sure that I don't destroy any of the tops on these soaps. We have got a gorgeous drop swirl on this one and I really do hope that the colours do stay somewhat. I'm expecting it to darken just a little bit. And on the top here we have that cream with the garnish of holly berries and holly leaves. It is smelling really good. It's not like your traditional... Christmas plum pudding sort of smell. It's a lot more fruitier. It's got those mint smells to it as well. So, and it seems to be holding very well in this soap. Now, all of my Christmas soaps will be available in the first week of November and they'll be available both online and at the markets that I attend to. Now, I am only making um, four bars or four loaves of Christmas soap this year. I don't want to be left with any in the new year. So once they are gone, they are gone. So if you really want to get your hands on some of the Christmas soaps, make sure that you either order online or come and see me at either the Cleveland Markets or the Twilight Makers Market if you are local to the area. So I hope you have enjoyed watching me make my plum pudding soap. If you have, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And if you have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign. And that will let you know the next time I bring the weekly soap making video. So until next week, have a great one. Bye.